Ruth was always proud and happy to attend our annual Faces Encephalitis Conference with her guide dog, Max. Ruth and I exchanged many, many emails over the years I knew her. I've taken the liberty of dictating some of her emails here in this recording for you to enjoy. July 30th, 2006. I love everyone in the group and I try not to say anything wrong and offend anyone. Whether we are E survivors or if we have not had E, we are all bound to say something wrong or argue it out. We are human and make mistakes just like anybody else. We should think before we say anything. I read the threads and if it is something I do not know about, I go on to another thread. Ruth was always very brave at trying new things on the computer. She downloaded the iVisit chat program and she and I used to meet online and chat. August 16th, 2006. My new friend Mike does my shopping for me and he gets yogurt, smoothies, nutritious drinks, flavored water and meals I can put in the oven. He even gets things to make sandwiches and soups with. I attend church every Sunday with Mike. I'm proud to be a friend of yours and also of Rick. Ruth would not just attend our conferences, but she would perform. You'll see in some of these pictures that she played the violin at one conference, and at another conference she came one evening to our dinner in full clown regalia and, and did performances and a puppet show. She really was amazing. Ruth's graduation speech from October 2006. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and graduates. When I was two and a half, my parents found out that I had sleeping sickness. Sleeping sickness is a brain injury which causes mild to severe retardation. My parents were not given the right information and I was slow in learning. I had gone to public school but did not do well there. My parents saw that I received a good education and sent me to a private school. I made many friends there and studied violin and piano. However, the regent's exams were very hard and I was not able to receive my diploma with the class. As time went on, I decided I was not going to be the only one in my family without a high school diploma. In 1979, I started going for my GED. I was in North Tonawanda and would go to every day to class. The first time I tested was in Niagara Falls. When I moved to the Rochester area in 1993, I enrolled in the Greece Central School District Adult Literacy Distance Learning Program. Even though I moved quite a bit within the Rochester area and the Southern Tier, Kay Nichols remained my teacher and made sure that I was receiving the work I needed in my studies. I had a psychological test after which I was permitted to use the calculator with my math, had extended time and was able to use a large print version of the test. I slowly passed each subject one at a time, but it took me a very long time to pass math. In 2002 the GED test changed and I had to start all over again. This time I passed all the parts of the test but I did not have enough overall points. Finally, in May of 2006, I took every part of the test and passed my GED with a total score of 2,390. I did many predictor tests to get prepared for the actual test, and I never gave up. I kept plugging and trying over and over until I passed. Now that I have my GED, I have more confidence in myself, and I have touched lives of many people. I am an inspiration to those who know me, especially to those who have encephalitis, because my model is to try and try again until you finally succeed. Always remember that God helps those who help themselves. Put God first in your life. To the younger generation I say, keep at it and you can do it just fine just as I did at my age. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. August 1st, 2006. I'm sure getting excited about my new assistance dog. I can't wait. I still have to go over training with him and they were working with him today and he is getting well at picking up dropped ob objects. Just about time to get ready for bed. It's after 9 o'clock already here. I talked with Beverly Underwood, the director of Canine Helpers for the Handicapped, and Keto is learning about the door to open it and let me know when someone is there and when he learns. It's real good. I'll be going over to be training with, with him soon. It should be very soon. I'm getting anxious to be in training with him. That is going to be my vacation. August 5, 2006. I miss my dad and I wish he were around for me to be with me here more often. 
I also miss my mum and wish both of them could have lived longer. Dad was 71 when he passed away, and my mother was in her 60s. April 11, 2007. These are my cousins in Buffalo. I have been contacting my nieces, and a week from today I leave for Kansas City to meet the ones I'm going with to Conway for a quilt retreat with Kay Wood's Quilting Friends, whom I email with online. My oldest niece and youngest niece are going to go to Kansas City to see me that night. I'm looking forward to seeing them. Ruth touched the hearts of so many encephalitis survivors. Here's one of her favorite pictures. Behind her you'll see Ingrid from New York, Bevan from California, and Wendy kneeling at the side from Vancouver, Canada. We will all miss Ruth so very, very much. Godspeed, Ruth. You're a wonderful, wonderful woman.